Good morning. Please let my words speak for me for you. Standing here on this beautiful fall morning, I know that there's only one, one source of all that I see, touch, hear, experience. And I know that I am, and each one here is, that source in beautiful, vibrant living color. Knowing that, I just pause to give thanks for the day. I pause to give thanks for this life that we live, for the opportunity to meet with family, those of one mind with us, the joy and the love and the laughter that that means. And so right here, right now, I open my mind, I open my heart, I open my soul as I prepare to listen to Reverend Diana talking about rooted in community, the best way to be, my own personal. And so I just say thank you, Father, Mother, God, and so it is. So it is. Amen. Johnson, the pastor spiritual director of Mystic Heart Spiritual Center, and we do welcome you home to our community and to your own with Mystic Heart, where all of your answers lie. So we begin our Taze meditation service this morning with uh, a short song. You're welcome to join in. Our beloved, just as you are, here in this circle of grace, shining your bright, radiant light, free to be you in this place. We are beloved, just as Just as I am here in this circle of 
so beautiful to join our voices together, feeling the vibration just rising in the space from the joining of voices in song or in chant. So we begin our meditative journey this morning by closing our eyes if they're not already closed, if you're comfortable doing so, and settling into this space. Letting go of all that has come before this moment and allowing ourselves to fully arrive. Taking a deep breath in and letting it go. Letting ourselves be held And in sacred ritual, we take a moment to sense our oneness with the global community. Envisioning a web of consciousness surrounding and infusing our planet. Seeing and feeling ourselves to be a radiant point of light in that web. knowing every human as an expression of divine light. As we envision every creature, every plant, every rock and grain of sand shining with the light of spirit, the soil, the water, the clouds, the wind, the heavenly bodies. Each one a golden thread woven tightly into the fabric of creation. my light enmeshed with yours and with all of life. Sensing our oneness, we acknowledge our role as caretakers in service to one another, to all life forms, and to the planet that sustains us all. Grounded in our oneness, we center our hearts in this month's theme, Beloved Community. And we acknowledge that whether we know it or not, whether we like it or not, we are rooted in community. By design, we are social animals. We begin life vulnerable and dependent on our caregivers. Over time, we progress to become independent and strike out in the world on our own. As we mature further, we realize that we cannot take on the world alone and we begin to grow toward becoming interdependent, working in harmony with those around us. The goal of our physical, psychological, emotional, and spiritual development is to reach a conscious state of interdependence. As we grow in self-awareness, we begin to understand that there is strength in developing strong relations with those around us. We are strong enough to stand on our own, but wise enough to understand that there is 
even greater strength in developing community. If you are spending your morning with us today, there is a divine impulse calling you to a deeper way of life. Something has guided you to seek spiritual community. There are three primary reasons to engage in beloved community. First, to be part of a group that is developing a culture of love and support as they learn to embody and live from spiritual principles. Second, to be exposed to a line of sacred study and practice that leads to the mystical path. And third, to allow your direct experience of the divine to lead you to the path of service, the path of action. All people thrive when they are surrounded by and surrendered to the love and support of others. In spiritual community, we discover the workings of spirit by consciously observing spiritual law in action and acknowledging grace as it moves through our lives. Taking part in beloved community offers a gentle reminder, an invitation to stay awake, to look past the appearances of the world to the truth that lies beneath. As we give more of our time and attention to the divinity at the heart of all things, we come to know the presence of God. Not as a concept or form, but as a felt experience. This is the path of the mystic. As we begin to sense and know God as life itself, we begin to understand our life's purpose, to be a servant of life, to give of our unique gifts in service to the whole.
Give me someone that I can feed. And when I am thirsty, show me someone who needs a drink. And when I'm cold, give me someone to keep warm. When I grieve, give me someone to console. Heavy and its weight, I cannot bear. And when I need someone to hold me, and it seems no one is there.
the spiritual teachings of ancient times, stressed the importance of service. In the 6th century BCE, the Buddha spoke these words. Teach this triple truth to all. A generous heart, kind speech, and a life of service and compassion are the things which renew humanity. sometime between the 5th and 3rd century BCE. The Hindu scriptures taught that every selfless act, Arjuna, is born from Brahman, the eternal, infinite Godhead. He is present in every act of service. All life turns on this law. Whoever violates it, indulging his senses for his own pleasure and ignoring the needs of others, has wasted his life. And following the teachings of the Rabbi Jesus, Peter reminds his brothers, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. It has been said that there are only two lasting bequests that families can hope to give their children. One of these is roots, the other wings. Roots by being confident that they belong, that they are part of something larger than themselves, and wings of freedom to evolve into their best selves. The same is true of spiritual family. As children of spirit of all ages, we also benefit from the assurance that we belong, that we have a network of support as we negotiate our mystical path. Just as in the forest where the tree roots grow together and intertwine in mutual support, our spiritual roots interconnect with each other, sharing the divine gift that feeds our souls. And it is from this ground of being firmly rooted, stable and secure, that we develop the courage to evolve. Personal transformation can be frightening. Letting go of our story of limitations and faults may feel like losing our identity. The love and support of beloved community can sustain us through these times of deep uncertainty. With the encouragement of spiritual community, we dare to stretch our wings. We seek new adventures in mysticism. We allow ourselves to let go of the familiar so that we can explore new possibilities, new visions of who we might be. We soar to new heights in consciousness, knowing that we always have a safe place to land. Moving into the silence, 
Visualize the roots of your spirit spreading out to connect with those of others in the community. Just as trees share resources through their roots, allow yourself to partake in the sharing of consciousness with one another. Feel the flow of divine energy emanating out from you and streaming back into you. We are drawing on an infinite source. Each of us gives what is ours to give and receives exactly what we need. Sense the spiritual power entering your body from your roots and rising up through you. Allowing our awareness gently to be led back into this place, we give thanks for the support of sacred community. Grateful for this time of communion with spirit and with one another, we truly appreciate the love and encouragement we share together. Thank you, God, for everyone and everything. I invite you to know with me now that Spirit is moving powerfully through each one of us and through our beloved community. Individually and collectively, we are a powerful spiritual influence on our world. As we evolve in consciousness, the benefits of our growth ripple out, 
blessing the entire world. We open our hearts and minds to the sweet inspiration of Reverend Diana's continued message this morning, and we rest in spirit, deeply secure in the knowing that we are firmly rooted in blessed, beloved community. We conclude our contemplations this morning by allowing the words of Reverend Jim Lockhart to permeate our consciousness. The soul is fed by meaning, fulfillment, and connection. The soul is fed by the joy of experiencing the mystical side of life with its rich sense of connection to everyone and everything. The soul is fed by the joys and the sorrows of the fully lived human life. The beloved community is a place where there is a balance between the everyday and the mystical, where both are taught and seen as two elements of a greater whole. There is a calling of the soul within each of us to be an agent of spiritual healing for humanity, even if only for an exceedingly small slice of it. Deep calls unto deep. And deep is calling each of us to heed its call. To fulfill our promise and potential as spiritually mature adults. This calling is intended to disrupt old patterns of thought and behavior that do not serve our soul's longing for connection, love, and compassion, and to develop our innate capacities to live as mature adults with a deeper sense of spiritual poise and strength. Ours is a call to awaken our inner genius and to apply it compassionately to the world in which we find ourselves. It is the clay from which we will build our collective future. Those of us in spiritual community are involved in something vital. It is up to us to ensure that this vitality is not wasted, but is expressed powerfully in our actions. We anchor ourselves in prayer as we acknowledge the one source, the one source that I call God, Spirit, Intelligence. 
forever giving of itself as its creation. I accept for myself and for each one listening that all beings are perfect and intentional emanations of the one life. I am a unique expression of God in form and so are you. Each one of us necessary, irreplaceable. As I move into the week ahead, I do all that I can, all that is mine to do in service to the whole. My thoughts, words, and actions create only good. I walk as a beneficial presence on the planet, planting seeds of love and compassion as I go leaving a path of peace and joy in my wake. I take time every day to notice the small miracles that permeate my life, to count my blessings, and to bless others by my presence. Setting this clear intention my week unfolds gracefully. I consciously and willingly place my full faith in the goodness of life. Grounded in that faith, I release this prayer, trusting the loving and lawful presence of God to take it and make it so. It is done, and so it is. Feels good to be here. So it's time for us to close the Teze portion of our service this morning, the Teze meditation. And as we do that, we offer the opportunity for those who wish to share of their financial good to do so in support of the work that our community is doing. And we are doing good things in the greater community. In case you're not aware, we have a food ministry that collects fresh organic produce every Saturday from the farmers, local farmers in our area, and we are the carrier to the mission so that fresh food can be shared with those who don't normally get much of it. And on Thursdays, we are blessed by um, From the Hearth Bakery we drive there every Thursday and we move between 50 and 90 loaves of bread that would otherwise go in a dumpster, a fresh bread, to um, both, we drop some with the uh, service workers association. About 20 loaves go there and then we take the rest over to the mission as well. Um, we're preparing to add more pieces to our food ministry in the coming year, in 2023. And the other thing that we're working with right now, which April Jimenez should be here for the next service to talk about, we're getting ready to jump into our 12 days of kindness for the holiday season again this year. And her goal is to double our giving from last year. Last year we collected items. She puts a list up. We collect items for a couple of months, two and a half months. And then we make gift bags during the month of December. And we go out into the community, to the homeless camps, and to places where unsheltered people dwell. And we just hand out Christmas presents. And it's great fun. And it, um, it's a moving experience. It does a lot of good. So we are involved in a lot of good in the outer community, not just here. So I invite you to share if you feel moved to.
comes from a collection collection of music, as you saw, uh, Adonai. Um, we've been doing that chant for our offering all month, but today, uh, just a quick mention that we begin uh, Jewish New Year today with Rosh Hashanah. So, if you practice any of those traditions, Happy New Year, Happy Rosh Hashanah. Um, there will be a 10-day period leading to the Day of Atonement, the Day of at one where the Jewish people will go into deep reflection and um, perhaps make changes of some kind in their lives and the way they think. So I thank you this morning for your gifts. I know that they come in to a place that is forever grateful. We know that it is through your blessings of time and talent and skill and treasure that we are able to take those gifts and multiply them and give them back out into the world. So with deep gratitude, I release this prayer. And so it is. Amen. All right, so we are wrapping up Tese. There will be coffee out front after our closing chant together. Um, you're welcome to stay for our conscious conversations if you'd like. Other folks usually come in between, some leave, it's just kind of a dance. But it's all related to this idea of beloved community. And um, I think that's, oh, any money that is left near the coffee or the lunch today uh, is going to Farmer's Footprint. So we donate all of our food donation money back out. Uh, and for a while now, we're, we're contributing to Farmer's Footprint. We're still working toward our first acre, but we're almost there. Uh, for every $100, we donate one acre of non-growable, desertified land will be put back into healthy production, regenerated in one year. So we're happy to be contributing to that. May your soul always find what it's looking for. May your heart always lead the way. May you live in peace and harmony. And may love always fill your day. May your path be strewn with happiness. May success find you everywhere. May you always embrace compassion and grace. And may God always answer your prayer. May you always embrace compassion and grace. And may God always answer your prayer. Have a blessed Sunday. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Please let my words speak for you. As I take a pause, taking a deep breath in, and releasing it. Breathing in the love and the joy of the day, the beauty of the day. As I look around and wonder at this world that we are a part of, that is a part of us, knowing that we are all a part of God, God flowing through us as us, such beautiful creations.
knowing that everything takes place in one mind, I know that I am rooted firmly in that, as each one of us is. And it's really great to just pause sometimes and remember. Remember where my roots are. Remember what my connections are. To let go of every day and bring myself into this one space at this one time. Letting go of everything that's come before and everything that will come after. As I open my heart, I open my soul, and I open my mind to listen to Reverend Diana as she speaks on Rooted in Community. Knowing that I will receive all the little tidbits that I need and that each one here will receive the spiritual food and the love and the joy that they need. And so with deep, deep gratitude, I say thank you, Father, Mother, God. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. 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 Ah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Lucinda, for creating such an open-hearted space for us to bask in this morning. All right. So if you're not awake, it's time to wake up. <laughs> we would like to welcome you to the Mystic Heart. And if you're new with us online this morning, or I don't think we have any new in the space, uh, my name is Reverend Diana Johnson, and I am the pastor and spiritual director here at Mystic Heart. And we welcome you home to our community and to your own Mystic Heart. Here we go. If you want to stand up, Welcome to the Mystic Heart, join the celebration, lift your voice and sing your part, take this affirmation, Spirit made us family, with loving hearts to share, together we are joyfully practicing the possible through prayer. Family, here we go. You guys danced too long last night or what? <laughs> Everybody, get up on your feet. See the light in everybody needs. Everybody, get up on your feet. See the light in everybody needs. Let us be reminded. Big family, hey, 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 h
hear the love in the sanctuary Lift your voice and repeat after me We come together 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 in the name of love We come together 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 in the name of love From every walk of life Every walk of life Every creed and color Creed and color Intend to be Look at the person next to you. Say Namaste, I bow to you. Now feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. 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 We all right, so I invite you. I know, you're going to say, what are we, Catholics now all of a sudden? <laughs> but if you would and can stand for this next portion or extend your hands out in some way where energy can be experienced through the body. What we've been doing is spending some time embodying our connection with spirit as we approach this um, practice, this ritual that we do each week of visioning a love-soaked world together. And so, feel your feet rooted to the earth in whatever position that you are in. Feel the energy moving up through your feet, flowing through your body and out through the top of your head and maybe even out through your fingers, your hands. The energy just circulates in through the feet and out through the body. Feel the power of creation moving through you as together we hold our vision for a love-soaked world where peace and joy, and abundance, and generosity, and justice, and freedom are the living principles that guide every life. Where all humans practice loving kindness and compassion, and care for our planet as the sacred home that she is. We are creating a world where all needs are met. Where all beings have plenty of nourishing food. The safety of a warm and comfortable home. Medical care. Education. Healthy relationships. Right livelihood creative contribution, and a sense of belonging. A world in which all beings are valued for their inherent goodness and light. Where the peace we cultivate within shows up as a world free of hatred or violence. We are creating a world that knows no greed where there is absolute abundance and simply having enough. Where every being deserves and receives all that is needed for a full, rich, and contented life. In this more awakened world, every member of the human family serves as a conscious vessel through which God's blessings flow. 
we disregard all appearances to the contrary. Walking by faith, not by sight. Knowing with our whole hearts that such a world is inevitable as we take steps moment by moment towards its creation. There is no reason we cannot have such a world, and so we call it forth from the realm of infinite possibility, knowing that it is taking form right here and right now as we hold this powerful vision, as we sense it, and as we speak it into form. We align our actions to support and nurture its graceful unfolding. And we give thanks, letting it be. And together we say, and so it is. Amen. Mm, you feel the shift in the energy in the room when we join together in visioning and in prayer. I think we're ready for a conscious conversation. That's what I think. Y'all ready? Okay, here we go. This morning our topic has been rooted in community through our Teze. And during Teze we spent time contemplating our inherent interconnectedness as human beings. We looked at three reasons for engaging in spiritual community. First of all, to be a part of a group that's developing a culture of love and support. And as we become part of such a group, we can then be supported ourselves as we learn to stand more deeply in spiritual principles as we live our lives. The second was to be exposed to a line of sacred study and practice that ultimately leads us to a mystical path, to mystical experience. And third, to allow your direct experience of the divine to lead you to a path of service, a path of action where we're not just talking, but we're walking the same thing we're talking. So if you're just joining us for this morning, you can find all that on our website and on our Facebook page. I think it was worth a look. But for our con uh, conservation, conversation this morning, I want to shake it up a little bit. I have two topics related to engagement in community that I'd like to throw out there for your input. Are you ready? Okay. First, I'd like to read you a paragraph from Creating the Beloved Community. Oh, look at that. I would like to, but I left my book at home. <laughs> that's funny. So that's not what we're doing right now. You're not getting it. We're not going to get that. I'd like to read from page 100, but that book is at home. So <coughs> let me look here at what's next. Oh, OK, I know what that was about. So you don't get to hear his words, but. I know what I'm talking about, so here we go. So he talks about when, one, when a person enters maybe a new community, a new spiritual community is how he's looking at it, there are a couple of processes that can take place for a person. The first is he calls translation, and the second he calls transformation. So he talks about translation as being the the process of getting familiar with the community's lingo, basically. Coming to know, you know, like if you came in to a community when I was at Center for Spiritual Living, there was a lot more of Ernest Holmes' language that, that was being used. I loved it. It's great. We use some of it here. Um, but we have our own flavor. And so we've expanded into some other forms of spirituality, eco-spirituality, evolutionary spirituality, mystical, you know, all of these different things. So we have, every community has a language that you begin to hear and then learn and become familiar with. And so it doesn't mean that you necessarily agree with what's being spoken all the time or that, um, a spiritual center's 
teachings are what you practice in your own life. Here we're very open, so whatever you practice is your practice. And But when you came through the door, there is a certain amount of translation that you begin to learn, just being around the speak, the, the spiritual speak. So in that context, what other ways can you see translation maybe happening as you become enmeshed in any new community? It doesn't even have to be spiritual community. I mean, there is, is a language that you learn. What else might be part of the translation step of joining into a community? Getting to know each other. Okay, getting to know one another as people, as We each have our own personal language. Right. And so we'll need to mesh them. Okay, so we each have our own personal language. So getting to know each other as, as human beings. Learning how things work, but uh, the, I guess uh, the social habits of the new community. Okay, learning the social habits of the new community. Learning how the services unfold. Okay. Getting com familiar with how services unfold. Dress code or lack thereof. <laughs> Dress code <laughs> or lack thereof. That would be us, lack thereof. <laughs> You'll notice my bare feet. <laughs> Anything else? The quality of <clears throat> the words and sentences I use in prayer. Okay, so... Less about me, more about the community. Okay, so getting familiar with or comfortable with a different quality of words used in prayer. Yeah. Anything else that wants to come out right now? Are, Are there, there any rules? Are there any rules I need to follow? Oh, not here. <laughs> <laughs> but some places there are, some groups, whether they're spiritual communities or other types of communities. What about making connections of the lingo in this community from a community where you've been, so making the connections between, oh, good. and how are they similar, saying the same thing, but with a different right. verbiage? So learning to bridge, bridge or translate between what I once believed or heard or was familiar with in one community and now I'm in a new community, how, how is a similar message maybe being spoken in different language or is the message completely different? But there's a bridging there. Good. Yeah. Anything else? See, I wait long enough and more good stuff <coughs> comes out. How about getting to know the pastor? Getting to know the pastor, yeah. In the spiritual community, that's important. And anyone else who's in a leadership or a volunteer role or people that seem to be responsible for putting it all together, making sure it stays <laughs> moving. So one of the unique qualities of our community is that we welcome and honor people from all faith paths. Any faith path that recognizes the action of a higher power. So what if you've come here for support and fellowship, but your personal spiritual life that you have as you come in is right on track and you're really happy with where you are, who you are, how it's working for you? And you don't wish to adopt any new philosophies or beliefs or practices. Is the process of translation still happening and is it still beneficial to you? I'm seeing some yes. nods, yes. Okay, you want to talk about that? How is it beneficial? Well, it helps you uh, understand the communication in that, within that community. It helps okay. you understand where people are coming from. Um, even if they believe slightly differently than you, uh, the translation, you just, just learn how to receive it 
in a way that makes sense to you, I guess. Okay. Literal, almost a literal translation. <laughs> okay. So you learn to translate the truth, the thread of truth that might be being spoken into the language that you use or understand. I think we can all stand to broaden our horizons, no matter how complacent we might be in whatever we're at. There's bound to be something else out there that we can learn from. Okay, so broadening our horizons is never a bad thing. down to me and just love everyone. Okay, so from a place of loving so everyone. Wherever you're at, mm -hmm. it doesn't put a barrier between something different. Right. It's the energy of God going back. Right, okay. So not allowing yourself, by taking part in the community and learning to translate you're not creating barriers between you just because you have different languages or different ways of understanding spirit. Good. I think it also might help to add more clarity and a more sophisticated understanding of what you believe and think by hearing mm -hmm. and chatting with other people in a community that may be different from where you've been. There's a way to deepen and broaden. All right. So deepening and broadening what you already feel or know for yourself by listening to other people. Yeah, it seems to me that openness to learn about new ideas allows us to listen more generously to one another if we're open. It doesn't ever mean that we have to change how we practice or what we believe, although we may find as we move through life that our beliefs shift and change. I think that's part of growth for most people. If we consider what we're hearing and honestly question the value that a new concept may have, that's what you're talking about. And if we're not open, my personal belief is if we're not ever open, we're stunting our own growth. We're just closing ourselves <clears throat> off. In the context of spiritual community, what do you suppose transformation means? Changing behaviors we adopt and use. Okay, changing behaviors that we adopt and use. Change of values. Okay. Change of values as we embody them. Learning to trust. Mm. That Learning. it will always mm. be there. Learning to trust. That can be a huge transformation for people okay. that have had, you know, good reason in their lives to not trust. Mm. <clears throat> Less about having to do certain things and follow certain rules mm -hmm. and more about what I want to do. Okay. It's a way of being able to express oneself without restriction that you thought you had to do this or had to be that. It just seems to bubble up sort of uh, organically. So your, your transformation you're talking about is just learning to be yourself and being comfortable doing that with trust that everybody's okay with that. And that you're okay that in you're wanting okay. these and expressing them at the same time. Right. Yeah. And having faith in that. And having faith in that process. In your own goodness, in your own more than okayness. That you have something to offer to a community no matter who you are what you bring. Because transformation involves change at depth. If you're saying I've been transformed, you've, you've gone beyond the form that you once had to some other actual form, whether it is in your behavior, your communication style, your values, your beliefs. And the process of going beyond learning about one's spiritual nature 
to actually experiencing your spiritual nature is another way that we might be transformed. If we had not had that experience prior to coming into new community, it's possible that you could begin to experience the sacred in ways that you have not in the past. When we have embodied a spiritual truth to the degree that we're living from it, not even having to consciously direct ourselves to do things differently, we are transformed. When we notice that we just are different. Once we were this way, now we're that way. We, we feel better the way we are now. We don't have to think about it anymore. Transformation happens in degrees as well. So we can have little transformations along the way to bigger transformations. Yeah, David. So what's the um, description of trans? Beyond. Yeah. It's just straight yeah. beyond. Beyond form. Beyond the creation of the current form that you have. That's the root, anyway. Isn't that <clears throat> implied the word trans mm -hmm. movement? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Moving beyond. Yeah. So Mystic Heart loosely defines itself as a new thought ancient wisdom community. We've, we haven't, we've changed our self-labeling every year, I think. We just keep shifting. Not because we don't know who we are, but we're defining more closely um, the threads of truth that run through many traditions that we find we can go in a lot of different directions, speak a lot of different languages, and we're still only speaking to the one truth that we call God as living intelligence expressing itself in all things by whatever language we're using. We have um, woven some threads of eco-spirituality, as I said, evolutionary spirituality runs strongly through what we do here. We might be called interfaith, because we have people of many faith practices that come in. We might be called a transdenominational community. We're beyond any denomination. We can't name ourselves any particular thing. So rather than um, the other denominational word that I just lost in my head. Non-denominational, non thank you. I was going to say multi, but that's not right. Yeah, so it's not even just non-denominational. It's beyond even looking at, you know, this is who we are, this is what we believe. It's, there are just some really solid guiding principles. Mainly it's love, loving one another, serving one another. And we can look at all of the, the wisdom traditions, and each one has their own language, and that's what it comes down to, loving one another, serving one another. Well, we honor all forms of prayer because there is not one correct way to pray. We do teach our practitioners um, and community members who are interested in learning affirmative prayer, or what you could also think of as um, spiritual alignment. It's a way of using language to rein in the thoughts and, and focus the thoughts on the sacred. In Science of Mind and Unity traditions, they call it spiritual mind treatment, or just treatment. I don't care for that word. It reminds me of going to the doctor, so it's just not my word. But what it is is a form of affirmative prayer. So when we say that we're practicing the possible through prayer, this is one of the forms of prayer we're talking about. And in my personal practice, I also use other forms. I use the form of prayer called blessing, I use a form of prayer called communion, silence, going into the silence. So all of these things are part of practicing the possible through prayer. So I want to start asking what you know about affirmative prayer. I know some of you in here know some things about affirmative prayer, and it might be nice to share what we know with those who are not familiar. What do you know about affirmative prayer? 
and wait, practitioners, for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> We use it up here all the time. It's got a po it's got a positive um, slant, okay, and that lends itself to higher access to higher thoughts and uh, feelings. Okay, so it has a positive slant, and it lends itself to higher awareness, thoughts, feelings, consciousness. Okay, it doesn't always begin with gratitude, but it really is about being thankful for okay. what is. All right, so being thankful for what is is a huge part of it, and there are those who begin every step along the way with a gratitude. I'm so grateful that this is so. I'm so grateful that this is so. What else? Recognition. Michael? I'm okay. sorry. No, Recognition ahead. that we are one with God. Okay, so it includes a recognition, and we're going to talk really briefly about the steps that it includes, because it is a formulaic in a sense, at least at first, when you're first learning about it. There are steps to it. As it turns out, the steps, the content, and the purpose and the context of the steps are more important than that they follow any particular rule. I'm just saying affirmative prayer changes stuff. It changes stuff. It does. It changes us and then our life changes. Yeah. So it is a language spoken in the affirmative. It looks past the appearances to the spiritual truth. So we're affirming the spiritual truth in an affirmative prayer. It does not ask for anything. It does not beg, it does not barter, mm -hmm. it does not petition. It is spoken in the present tense, as though that which we are aligning with is already so, because in spirit all things are possible, and so we're tapping into the, the possibility as something that is occurring right now. So, how might it be different from other forms of prayer? I named a couple other forms. There are lots of forms of prayer. It is done to affirm and change the prayer. Okay. Not anyone else. So that goes forth into the world in the way I act and the energy I put forth. But I, when I do a prayer, it is to change me. Okay. So affirmative prayer is to change the one praying thereby putting out a different energy, different thought patterns, and then drawing back different experiences as a result. Yes, ma'am. For me and probably others that may have been raised similar, mm -hmm. I think we were, I was raised to believe that God was outside of me, mm -hmm. separated from me, right. and that I lacked the power to cause change for myself. Right. So I had to petition an outside source for aid or intervention or, or help or whatever mm -hmm. was beyond my right. control or, or that I had no power. And I think affirmative prayer changes your mind into you know, remembering that you are a part of God. You do possess the same power of intention and energy. Right. And rather than seeking aid from some outside force, it reminds me that I have the power to change my own reality if I pour my energies into it and say it's already done and put my mind into that instead of, someone help me, please. Right. <laughs> well spoken. So there will always be someone in a space talking about what you just said that says, well, what if I do this affirmative prayer and the thing that I want to have happen doesn't happen? It doesn't always happen, does it? No, I think no. didn't come. That's right. <laughs> What it changes is how you experience the world. It, it can bring different circumstances. It can change the forms. But it can also change you. Ideally, it's changing you and your way of experiencing the world. So if you were once in this mind state, you might not have had your 
um, your life change much or at all, but you're experiencing it differently. You're seeing it differently. So therefore having a different experience of it. Yeah. I'd like to suggest that it, there's a reduction in being motivated by fear. Okay, so it's not motivated by fear. That's absolutely true. Affirmative prayer is not. So there are five basic steps. I'm not going to spend lots of time, but just so you know that there is, when you begin to learn a form of affirmative prayer, if you're not familiar with it, there is a set of five steps that can be used to help you learn. And so why might this be a useful form of prayer to add to your toolbox? if it's not something you already use. We have a lot of tools in our spiritual toolbox and they're all useful at different times. If you are a person who's used to praying a prayer where you are asking for something, using these steps is a way to move yourself into a habit of stating it as a fact, okay. as, as opposed to pleading for some outside source. All right. It adds a structure to the thinking. It adds a structure to the thinking. It, actually, its primary purpose when it was developed was to help you change your patterns of thought and your patterns of speech, the ones that don't serve you any longer. That's what it was developed for. And it is an effective way to clear your head and your heart before settling into silence or some other form of prayer. <clears throat> Let's see here. It's creative. It is creative, yes. I believe that all forms of true prayer are creative. Okay, so who knows what the preparation for an affirmative prayer looks like. Anybody have a thought about what preparation might look for look like? Getting silent and going within. Mm, getting silent, getting still, going within, breathing, settling, just like preparing for any form of prayer. <coughs> settling yourself to the best of your ability and then asking within yourself, what is it I'm to pray about, pray around? What, what am I looking to experience as a result of this prayer time? So before you begin prayer, getting clear on what is it that I'm doing with this prayer. Doing that ahead of time, but being open to the internal voices that might come up and say, well, <laughs> this is more along those lines and you realize that mm -hmm. you're actually praying for something that you didn't even realize you needed. Okay, so not being attached to what your mind thinks and that's why we're talking about getting really silent and listening within for what the gut and the heart is really longing to experience at this time. So then what is the first, what they call the first official step in affirmative prayer? Recognition. Uh, aligning ourselves with God, that God okay. within us. All right. So recognition is a term that's used and we, we're going to we can use the terms and then we can use what they mean. So aligning ourselves with God, acknowledging, the first step is acknowledging that God is all there is. Infinite intelligence, by whatever name you call it, is the only thing happening right now and always. All of creation is, is spirit and form. God giving of itself as its creation, as it does. So sitting with that 
thought, idea, feeling, ideally feeling, the allness of source. And then unifying yourself with that, recognizing in the second step that if that's all that's going on, then I must be that too. Because there is nothing else. I mean, how special would I have to be if I'm the only thing outside of God? <laughs> right? Okay. So we're not that special. We're all unique and individual, <laughs> but we're not outside of the realm of spirit. So acknowledging that is the second second step. Then what do we do? Anybody know what's next after we really are sitting in the feeling of our oneness? When we speak forth our desire. Okay. We That's speak a forth place, like the container. Okay, we speak forth our desire, that which we are seeking to experience in our lives. Sometimes this form of prayer can be used for changing physical conditions in our lives. There's nothing wrong with using it for that purpose. But always a good idea to look a little deeper than that. So this is what I want to experience. Say it's a new car. Just throw that out there. Okay, that's all right. New car is what you need. Pray for a new car. But really, what is it about that new car that I'm seeking to experience? Is it safety? Fulfillment. Is it fulfillment? You know, so, so what is it? What's the experience that I'm looking to have? And perhaps anchoring your prayer in that experience, in that God quality, in the direction of getting from point A to point B and leaving it a little more open than what your mind, you know, might think that you need. So after you are clear seeing and feeling that quality that you're wishing to experience, then what? Gratitude. Gratitude. Giving thanks that there is a loving and lawful presence by whatever name you call it that is responding right now to your prayer. It's already in action. It's already working. Gratitude for all of the blessings of the day. Gratitude for whatever you're grateful for. Because when we say thank you for something, we're assuming there's already something to say thank you for, right? We don't usually say thank you for nothing. So it's another way of saying it's done. Thank you, it's done. It's handled. Don't know how, don't know where, don't know what it looks like. That's not my business, but it's done. And then what? Let it go. Let it go. That's our and so it is. Amen. Every tradition has a way to let it go, release it to the power of the universe. I know that it is coming into form right now. Right now. Yeah. Having created it, it is complete. Having created it, it is complete. Now, will it, the it, always look like you thought it would look. Mm. Nope. <laughs> no. Everybody laughed. <laughs> yeah. And again, you know, are we really releasing it? Because if it comes in a different form than we were thinking it needed to come, but it is our highest and best, because that's all that's ever unfolding, are we okay with saying, oh, so that's how it looks? Okay, thank you. Again, thank you. That can be a good thing, too, because my imagination is limited. Right. But I'm giving it over to divine imagination yeah. that is unlimited. So right. uh, it can show up in ways that I could never possibly have predicted. Yeah. I have my set of perceptions to view how it will turn out in my life, how this is supposed to go. But if we really open it up and release it, infinite possibility is now, you know, at our disposal. 
I think that's probably one of the most important parts of it is to let go. Yes. To let go and let God. It's too easy to say, but I want it to happen this way. Right. Or I'm going to do this, and that opens up the way for it to happen. Yeah. Yeah, letting it go means really being open and watchful and, and realizing when it has come about, even if it doesn't look like you thought it would look. Thinking and behaving as if it already does exist. Yes, thinking and behaving as though it's already done, that it's already in existence. So this is a way of changing your mind and your heart and the way you think and the way that you speak. That's what affirmative prayer is really for. And then when you embody a more affirmative language and way of being in your life, the world responds to you differently. It can't help it. Whatever we put out tends to come back to us. So if we are speaking and living from an affirmative place, we're going to have more affirmative response from the universe, from spirit. Ernest Holmes used to talk about how God only says yes. That's all God ever says is yes. Mm. So whatever we put out there, yes. Man, I am tired today. Yes. <laughs> My bank account's really low right now. Yes. It's like it doesn't serve us to put that negative stuff out there. It might not change my bank balance today, but it does have an impact in the long run. Changes an outlook. Changes an outlook. Yeah. So instead of looking at the bank balance, looking at the many blessings in your life and how abundantly blessed you are, no matter what that number says. Just a different, you know, a pivot. So I'm going over time because we're talking a lot, and that's a good thing. Um, I'd like to... I'm going to go ahead and have you play a, a short song. Karen Mitchell's song, because it's called And So It Is. And if you listen for the steps we just talked about, they're in this song. So let's go ahead and listen.
So I talk about affirmative prayer today because it's one of the things that's most noted when people do come in as new community members. It's one of the translational pieces from ways of prayer that they've prayed before. And even if someone doesn't shift the way they pray or the ways they pray because of it, um, if you understand what it's about, how it works and why we use it that way, it might make being present during prayer, because we use it a lot from up front here, um, it, it would just help make you more comfortable being in the presence of people using that form of prayer. It is a powerful tool, and it's one way that we are rooted in community here. We use it in addition to other forms of prayer. So I'm going to use it right now. I use it every week when I close. And I ask you to join me in knowing that this beloved community is growing and thriving and serving as a unique, perfect, and intentional expression of one divine power. There is only one. There is one and only one thing going on here and everywhere, and that is God, Source, Spirit, the Divine expressing itself as its creation. That's it. That's all that's happening. Nothing else. There is no spot where God is not. It's all there. Knowing this to be the absolute truth, I am and must be a perfect and intentional slice of the Almighty with all the qualities and potential inherent in that title, already in place. Factory equipment. We all have it. Here's what I know. This beloved community is growing and thriving because generosity and abundance are qualities of spirit that run in and through every member who walks through our doors. Its members and friends are growing and thriving because expansion and evolution are divine attributes that live within each one of us, just waiting for us to fully engage them. My world is a loving, joyful, peaceful, and beautiful place because God is everywhere I look, and God cannot be other than loving peaceful, joyful, and beautiful. Beyond all appearances, I know this to be the truth. I know it in my mind. I feel it in my heart. I feel it in my bones. And so I give deep and profound thanks for this spiritual truth. I give thanks for the knowing that God's loving and lawful presence is forever and ever at work in my life. I'm so grateful for the many, many blessings of this and every day. And so centered in praise and thanksgiving, I release my powerful word in full faith, knowing that it is so, calling it done. And so it is. So it is. Amen. <sighs> well, I'm just about ready for some brunch. <laughs> but before we do that, as we do every Sunday, um, we offer this opportunity for those who wish to share of their financial good with our community in support of the work that we're doing. And we are doing some good work. April's going to share some of that with you in just a moment. If you're at home, you can find a donate button and a mailing address on our website, mysticheart.org. And we really do appreciate every gift that is offered, time, talent, skill, treasure, love, prayer. service, prayer, all of it. It all makes us who we are. So I ask that you maybe speak or read this affirmation for our offering. It is something that we hold close to our hearts. As I awaken to the God within me and all around me, I see abundance everywhere I look. 
I consciously step into that flow of abundance by this act of giving. I offer this gift freely in the spirit of love, blessing and sending it forth to heal and prosper. It is evidence of my deep faith. It does good work in the world and blesses all of creation. I give from a consciousness of abundance. And so it is. Amen. So enjoy today, Eddie Watkins, Jr. It's a new day. Every day we're born again To create this world we live in So now let's claim our good and speak our word deeply grateful knowing that everything happens in the mind of God. All is one. And I'm deeply grateful for the flow, the energy of the one flowing through each and every one, each and every part of Mystic Heart. I open my heart, knowing an abundant flow in all ways, energy, money, help, service, love. I know that we are all deeply supported in the way that we need to be supported each and every time, each and every day. And so with deep gratitude, knowing that that's happening right here and right now, I say thank you, Father, Mother, God. And so it is. Amen. And join us in our final song. Thank you. I don't know if you guys have fun doing this, but I do. <laughs> I think fun is contagious anyways, right? Yeah. I think so. All right, here we go. All together, hand in hand, to see the light, we take a stand and we are changing. A whole new life for you and me, take your past 
and set him free and share this blessing. Love be with you, peace unfold you, spirit lift you, breathe it in. Truth comes through you, make it flow to you, let joy renew you until we meet again. Love be with you, whoops. Next week, Dalton Fitzgerald and Gary French are going to be joining us for music. Yay.